Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today I'm doing a video on how to upgrade your horn on a Nissan Leaf to an aftermarket, more appropriate sounding horn. As a lot of Leaf owners know, the horn that comes with the car is basically off a scooter or a moped maybe, or at least it sounds like it. So um, unlike a lot of other cars that have a dual horn like this, um, so this is what we're going to be installing. I've read some other articles on it and I heard that this brand and this uh, this model number is actually pretty good on this car. It works pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and just stick it on there. It comes comes with a relay, although you won't need that. You should be able to just use it as it is. 100, 128 decibels. And um, so yeah, let's do a sound test and uh, stick this bad boy in see what we can do here. We'll be doing it all from above removing this panel down here and then we'll be removing the coolant reservoir or just pushing it out of the way and we'll be able to get access to the horn which is located right down in this area right here. So it should be pretty simple, pretty easy to do. It shouldn't take very long and hopefully we get something that sounds like a car horn instead of a moped. So for first of all let's do a sound check and uh, I have a I'm a pretty scientific kind of guy, so uh, I have a sound meter here. So we'll do a sound test before and after. Okay, so here's what we got here. 99.1 decibels max. Okay, so all we have to do is snap these things right off right here. pop out. Okay, first step is done. We remove that panel right there. And now we're going to take this out. Okay, that's two 10 millimeter bolts. And then all you have to do is pull this guy up and kind of brace it out here on the side. You don't have to disconnect anything. No hoses to disconnect. And then we have full access to our little moped horn which is right there. Very easy to get at. So let's go ahead and remove that. Okay, so that was a 12 millimeter bolt holding it in. And this is a comparison of the old and the new. So what do you think? You think that this is going to sound the same as this? And this? <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So all we have to do is, um, you want to note that uh, that this is the ground wire, the wire that goes to the back to the, the, the mounting bracket. It's the, actually the longer wire of the two, and this is the input. So all we need to do is custom fabricate a, uh, a wire to, to make one connection go to two. And so I, I got some scrap wire around here, so I'll be able to fabricate that pretty quickly. But that's really the only actual modification needs to be done. Okay, so here's what I came up with here. So I kind of reused this little brass piece and I'm reusing the um, the mounting bracket. But everything else I pretty much ditched. So I added a couple bolts here. I wasn't expecting to have to do that, but I have some extras. So I mean, I basically have one here and then one here and then the washer and then the nuts. And then I've been lock tighting everything together, make sure everything is solid. So this bracket's going to go on here like this, and then this is going to mount to the car at a slightly different location, a little bit higher up, which is interesting because there just happens to be that there. So you need like electrical stuff, and then I and then I kind of made my little my little uh, two to one connector here. So this will plug into the um, plug into the existing connection and then these two go right onto here and then I reused the, the ground at the mounting bracket so that that won't need an extra wire for that that would just go right into the factory wiring and so I got Loctite here I used an 8 millimeter to get this bolt off of here and then a 12 for this bolt that mounted to the car but I'm not using those anymore these are, you know, these are discarded now so so basically you need an 8, a 10, and a 12 millimeter 
flathead screwdriver, some thread lock, some electrical tape, electrical stuff. That's really all you need. And as far as mounting location goes, I need three hands here. Oh, let me see. So this is the this is the current position down here, where my finger is pointing to down here. That's where it was at before, and what I've found is I found this bolt up here. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it up a little higher. I just kind of sand it off to finish and everything to get so I have a nice ground connection. And then the wires right here pretty much are going to fit just perfectly right here. So I think this is going to be a better location than it was originally. Just a slightly higher up, a little bit off that, that plate down there, a little bit closer to the actual lower grill, pointing straight out. Should have a pretty good sound quality. Okay, so here it is. All mounted back up. All the wiring connected. Fits pretty nicely. It's a pretty nice location. It's right down by the by the lower grill air dam area in the front of the car. I'll give you some point of reference here. So this is what it looks like. So it fits in there pretty nicely. Lots of room, very easy to work with. So let's go ahead and bolt this thing back up and uh, try it out. I don't know, was that any louder or not? Oh, here we go. 108.1. So what is that about? Nine, nine and a half, nine, nine point four decibels louder. It definitely doesn't sound like a moped either. Okay, so my final thoughts. Um, well, it was claimed to be 128 decibels, and I got 108.1, so it's not exactly what it claimed to be. I'm not sure if uh, there's any kind of voltage restriction on the battery here. Maybe if it discharges. Actually, yes, I need to check that next. Let's check that next. Okay, so the battery reading is 12.1 volts. So that's that's about average. I mean, I know if it was a gas car charging, an alternator would charge at 13 volts or so, 13.5, 14 volts in some cases, up to. So. Uh, it would be higher than that. So, I mean, that's that's about what you would expect as far as voltage. I mean, the car is off right now. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, 128 decibels, and I get 108. So, I don't know. I feel kind of feel, feeling a little bit mixed emotions about that. I think it should have been a little bit louder. But, um, wouldn't be the first time somebody made a claim that wasn't true. Especially in the automotive industry. But, anyway, um... I'm happy with it though. I think overall we'll see how it does. I mean, that nine decibels or so probably is enough to make a difference. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it, somebody, especially the tone being a little bit lower and everything, a little bit more full range and everything, I think it would be very beneficial if somebody said, because sometimes nine decibels can make a difference. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you haven't already, like if you did find this helpful, of course, and then uh, go ahead and subscribe too, because that helps the channel out, makes me, uh, encourages me to do more videos. So, thanks again. Bye.